to the letter the rules that were outlined in the bylaws existed. That's that existed. However, there was a surprise when they were brought to the full county committee, they were tabled by the executive committee, changed and voted behind closed doors. So we don't know who supported which, who didn't support which. We don't know why certain things that we put on the initial suggestion uh, was rejected. There was no explanation for that. And I'm curious about in the future, how we can uh, have more transparency so that we will understand how that process works since we believe to have followed it to the letter. And yet nothing that was promised or guaranteed in the bylaws came to pass, as far as we understood it. Well, I would disagree to the extent to which virtually the entire slate of material that I just presented to you was in a, in its first instance and first presentation offered by you. So I don't, uh, I'm, I'm not sure. Why was it voted on in private and not by the body as we were intending to have it voted on? Well, because you, sir, by yourself, do not represent the entirety of the Democratic Party. Thank you. However, the issue, sir. The issue is that the special, the special committee added a whole number of changes and rules that were not submitted to the entire county committee, which, according to the rules, as far as I read them, is the way unless the special committee has some extra authority, which Mr. Fiddler can happily explain to us, I guess. I, the executive committee is empowered to make changes to, to the rules. The county committee, per se, empowered it. And of course, whether you voted yes or no on the motion to refer the proposals that were made two county committees ago to the executive committee, which then created the special committee on rules to report back to it to act, that that's what happened, exactly what happened. And I would say that I did in the interim, indicate to all district leaders everywhere that if there were further changes to the rules that they wanted to be considered, um, that they would all be considered. And they were, which, which is why we have generated the horribly controversial rules that we can now give notice by email and text message as opposed to merely telegraph and Pony Express. So, uh, you know, we, we have, we, you know, there, there is a great deal of difference between writing a theoretical resolution for an amendment and then actually putting it into the legal document in the right place, in the right words, and in the right context. And that was what everyone, you know, spent the time and, and effort to do. And in fact, I think, you know, there were some compromises made, you know, on both sides, I, I must tell you. Uh, but in the end, the spirit and the direction of every proposal that was made was accepted and, and, and is embodied in, in, uh, in the substance of what you just heard. Sir. Um, regardless of the bylaws and the rules and the rights and the draft laws, I have a question for the chairperson. Have you stood up at the start of the meeting and been class of the community for the encouragement of the democratic process? You encouraged us to go out and encourage people to vote and be a part of the democratic process. How is this, uh, how is this body encouraging the democratic process? Is this the democratic process? <laughs> Sure, they've only you been adopted. You took them, you changed them, you, you, you agreed on them in private, and, and, you, and you dictate them to us. What kind of thing is that what you call them up? Are you trying to encourage us? Do we, do we feel encouraged? No. 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 Every board meeting has people, every board meeting has minutes. Do you have minutes? Where are the minutes? Sure. Yeah. Mr. Grammar.
a great journey. It begin, begins with one small step, and we have taken that step, more than just a small step, and everyone should be very happy about this. I think we can all go home and read what Saul Linsky and Mr. Rappel says about compromise. This is a great victory for uh, New King's Democrats. And while you didn't get everything you want, and we have some questions about process, and I'm not going to say that some of them aren't salient, I think we should be celebrating. Remember what George Aiken said. Sometimes you declare victory, then you can go home. But I hope you come back. Ladies and gentlemen, we, we have guests on the podium who've traveled long and far. So do we. So do we. I thank you. And, sir. My name is Skittles. As you can see, I'm together. I have been a member of the committee for quite a while. The last two meetings I've attended, I have sensed the frustration by a significant percentage of the people who come here. Now, you started the meeting, and I'm happy that no Pindler stood up and asked for this change. And now that you have done it, I hope you realize how painless it was. <laughs> created an opportunity for us to have some transparency. But as I said, it's the second meeting I've come to. And what I've found is that an agenda is created, panelists or speakers are presented to us that had nothing to do with what was the operative uh, feelings of a significant percent. Mm. You yes. really want to what we need to do is to encourage more of the young people to participate. We need to ensure that the executive committee is reflective and cross-generational. One of the reasons that the National Democratic Party is in disarray, and one of the reasons why we lost the election last time, is because the elders failed to listen to the youth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.